in 1953 came Watson and Crick, who, with the help from colleagues Rosalind Franklin and Morris Wilkins, discovered how the six billion base pairs that make up our genetic material are stored in the cell. The DNA was actually a helix made of two strands. However, the question lingered. How does DNA replicate? There were a few theories, three actually. One of them was conservative replication, where a DNA molecule would get copied and make a second, new red DNA molecule. The second was dispersive, where the DNA molecule would be cut at various parts, each of which would get copied here in red and reattached to produce two DNA molecules. And the third was semi-conservative, where two DNA strands would separate and each one would serve as a template to copy a second red strand, thus producing two DNA molecules. But which one was it? Many scientists did not believe that two DNA strands could separate because of how strong a DNA molecule is, so they were skeptical of the semi-conservative model. The only way to solve this was to create an experiment, to tell the new DNA strand from the old one. So two scientists, Matthew Meselson and Franklin Stahl, had an idea to design an experiment that would be known as the most beautiful experiment in biology. Their findings are published in their article titled The Replication of DNA in E. coli, published in May 1958 in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences. These scientists used bacteria to answer the question of DNA replication, since it could be easily grown in the laboratory. They grew the cells in the presence of a specific type of nitrogen, which is found in DNA, that would make all of the DNA very heavy. They used centrifugation, which can separate things according to their weight. Initially, all of the DNA in the cell was heavy, and was at the bottom of the tube, since it was grown in heavy nitrogen. Then they started growing these cells in the presence of light nitrogen, so all of the DNA made in subsequent cell divisions would be lighter. After one cell division, the DNA was half as heavy, so half of the DNA molecule contained heavy nitrogen and the other half didn't. This is not in line with the conservative DNA replication model, which would predict that one molecule would be all light and the other all heavy. However, this is in line with the semi-conservative or the dispersive model. After two cell divisions, the DNA molecule was now either half heavy and half light or entirely light. So this is now not in line with the dispersive model, which would predict that the DNA after two cell divisions would contain a mixture of heavy and light DNA. Instead, this experiment agrees with the semi-conservative DNA replication model. Every cell gets one old DNA strand and one new one. By discovering that two strands of DNA can separate and provide the template for the production of two new strands, Meselson and Stahl revolutionized genetics. Scientists were very skeptical that this was even possible, but Meselson and Stahl proved it with a beautifully designed experiment. They also went on to show that heating DNA can cause the DNA strands to separate. This simple concept is the basis for an important technique we frequently use in the laboratory called polymerase chain reaction, which is used in genetic testing, forensics, and paternity tests. Meselson and Stahl identified the fundamental process by which our DNA gets passed on from cell to cell. This is the basis for inheritance and an essential part of our development from a single cell to a complete organism that maintains the same DNA sequence in all of its cells. This exciting finding opened up many new doors and research avenues. Because DNA is the command center of the cell, we could now study how DNA gives orders for the cell to follow. What controls the ability of DNA to make protein? How does one cell know it's a heart cell and another cell know it's a liver cell if they all have the same DNA? Now, DNA wasn't just a static double helix. It was a molecule that was animated. It could make more of itself. It could instruct a cell to behave a certain way. All of the secrets of biology were ready to be answered. Today, we understand many of these questions. We know that the process of DNA replication is very complex with many proteins coming together to make this happen as well as proofreading and repair mechanisms to make sure that DNA is properly copied. It's amazing now to look back at this very fundamental finding that DNA replicates in a semi-conservative manner and see how it has revolutionized biology and our appreciation for DNA.